In this lesson, we'll work through the IEB paper from November 2023, question 1A on inventory. Krisha Patel owns Patel Power. They're an established South African business that imports alternative energy components from an international manufacturer, Zhang Zapa. The fact that it's an international manufacturer means we need to watch out for things like customs duties and also exchange rates that might fluctuate. The 2022-2023 lo scheduled load shedding has dramatically increased the demand for their Wi-Fi UPS or uninterrupted power supply units. They use the periodic inventory system for all of their stock. Remember that the periodic inventory system means that inventory bought is recorded as an expense purchases. And then cost of sales would simply be calculated at the end of the year using opening and closing stock. They have a fleet of six delivery vehicles and are registered for VAT, but that those pieces of information relate to parts B and C, so we won't worry about them. Before we go and look at the information relating to part 1A, we need to first go and see what's required. 1.1 asks us to calculate the weighted average of one UPS unit. Remember that the calculation for weighted average is simply to take the total value of the inventory divided by the quantity. It's actually exactly the same formula that we'll use when we work out average share price for companies. I always like to pop the formula in, not that you need to show any kind of formula, but just for myself, because then when I get the information, it'll be easier to remember where I need to use it. As part of finalizing the insurance claim, we need to determine the number of units that were stolen during the year. The easiest way to do this is to remember that your opening inventory plus your purchases minus closing should equal what was sold. Therefore, any missing part along the way is going to illustrate how much was actually lost or stolen in this case. There is a 1,200 rand excess charged on every claim. An excess simply means that's the first part payable by you. So what that means in effect is that you would take your total claim and you would need to subtract the excess to find out how much the actual payout will be in order to answer this question. So you would work out your claim, however you'll do that, and then you'll need to say less the excess, which is 1,200, and that will then give you your claim. Uh, sorry, the payout. We then need to complete the trading statement for the year ended 28th of February. The trading statement is simply the top part of the statement of income. In other words, we don't need to show the expenses below. We don't even actually need to calculate gross profit in this case because they've asked us not to. Um, so we're just going to show our sales and cost of sales calculations. And they've given us space to work out the purchases. Now that we know what we need to do, we can go and start using all the information. Patel Power values their stock using the weighted average method. Well, we kind of saw that already from the uh, question that was asking us to use weighted average. Um, and obviously that differs to FIFO, um, where uh, weighted average, we're just saying, what is the average price of one unit? Keep in mind that when you're working out the actual value of closing stock, you would need to go and work out um, the total amount that was actually lost, um, and we'll do that later for the claim. Uh, 
A UPS unit consists of one component and is bought and sold as a single unit. The stock records for the financial year ending the 28th of February were as follows. So now this is where we're going to start pulling our information to work out our weighted average, as well as working out how many units were actually stolen. Um, we can see to start off with, we've got an opening stock of 3,000 sets. The fact that we had 3,000 units on hand, we can immediately use over here in determining the number of units. We know that the total value was 975 rand, so 1,000. So we can put that at the top of our calculation of weighted average, and at the same time, put your number of units at the bottom. We can then see what our purchases for the year were. We bought 48,000 units at a variety of prices, but we can see the total amount there. So we can again put the value at the top, 15,600,000 000 over the 48,000. I can also use it in part of my calculation of the number of units by simply saying um, plus my purchases of 48,000 units. They do give me all the individual amounts, but when I'm using weighted average, I actually don't need those. I just need to know what the total amount was. If we were using FIFO, then I would need to the individuals. We can then see that there were some units gifted in January 2023. And in fact, there's a little bit of information about that later on. Right now, we look at that, we don't actually understand what it means. So what I would do is I'd say, okay, well, we know we need to use it for something, but it's unclear at this stage whether they were gifted to us or gifted to somebody else that we gave them away. So I would just put a little star here and I'll come back to it as soon as I get more information about that. But then I can see that I've got my closing stock and I can use that, the 8,200 units. That's not going to be part of my weighted average calculation. You don't need to use it there at all because it's not part of what was bought. It's just saying that's what we have at the end. So when we're working out the number of units that were sold um, or the, the lost amount, we can see that 8,200 was my closing stock that I would need to subtract. We can then go and look at the information from the stock records. They sold 42150 uh, units during the year at 595 Rand each. The selling price is not important for calculating the number of units, but obviously I will need that for sales. Now over here, we can see that my sold was 42150. So I can pop that in and then my missing figure will be the calculation for what was lost or stolen. So I can work that out shortly. In the meantime, I can go to my sales part and I can say over here, I've got my 42150 times 595. Now, although we can add up at this stage, I always prefer to do all the adding at the end, just in case there's any adjustment or other information that needs to come in. We don't want to have to redo everything. Now, at this stage, we can also pop in some of the information from the stock records. We can see there's the opening stock of 975,000. We can see that we had purchases of 15600, but there is a space for calculating purchases. So obviously there's something a little bit more interesting there that I need to use. 
Um, so we'll just pop it in the calculation space. Um, we don't yet know about carriage, et cetera, et cetera. Um, we don't know the value of closing stock either, but we do know that it's 8,200 units and we'll then just need to bring in what the value is, obviously from using the weighted average calculation that we'll use. Information B, 2,000 units were returned in October as they had the European plug point. And obviously that means we can't use them in South Africa because they're not going to fit our plugs. So Zhang Zappa accepted the return. That means that over here, we also have a return um, that we would subtract from the purchases minus 2,000 units. So that'll be part of that calculation. It also means that for my purchases, I'm going to have to say minus 2,000 units. Now, if they were returned in October, it means they must have come from September. So it must have been part of those that we returned. And so therefore those are the value that we're going to use, 425. In January, Zhang Zappa gifted 1,500 units as they became a preferred supplier uh, based on the purchase history. They delivered these free of charge to Patel Power. Remember that Zhang Zappa is our supplier and Patel Power is us. Um, sometimes it helps to actually remember who's who in the zoo. That means that we got some freebies. We got some units free of charge. So that means that at the bottom of my weighted average calculation, I'm actually going to add in those 1,500 because in reality, it means that the cost of all my units has actually split. The number of units that we received, we're going to add on another 1,500 because we did receive those. It's not going to affect my actual values of purchases, et cetera, because it was a freebie. A total of 81,500 was paid for carriage on purchases during the year. Remember that the delivery cost is part of the cost of sales. So it's very important to remember to add that value to my weighted average calculation and to my cost of sales. The definition of the cost of sales cost is simply that you want to use all the costs involved of getting that inventory to the location and the condition so that it's available for sale. And obviously delivery is part of that because you'd need to get it to the right location. So that means that we can also pop it in over here as 81,500. On the 30th of December, Krisha discovered that an employee, Mad Mac, had been stealing UPS units throughout the year. She subsequently dismissed the employee. The value of the loss calculated on the weighted average method was deemed to be of a material nature. A claim for the loss was lodged with the insurance company. Remember that material nature means it is important. And it's going to make a, dis a, a difference to the decisions that would be made by sh stakeholders looking at the financial statements. So that's why we're going to need to do our calculations of the losses. Right. Now that we've used all of that information, we can go and do our calculations. Adding all of these numbers together and working it out should then give you a weighted average of 313 rand per unit. So that means that I can now take that and use that partly in the amount of the claim. Once we know how many units have been stolen, it's going to be 313 per unit. I 
I can also use it over here when I'm looking for um, the value of my closing stock. We now know that it's going to be at 313. Working out the number of units that were stolen, you should find that 150 units are missing. As the missing figure over here. And that means that you would claim your 150 um, times the 313, which would give you a total claim of 46950. Now, what is important to remember is that when we are calculating in our financial statements, that amount over there is a loss. Um, it is a loss due to theft. It is an expense of the business. It is not part of cost of sales. And so therefore, we're actually going to need to take that amount and go and pop it in over here as a subtraction from your cost of sales. Because you don't want the stolen amount to be part of the cost of sales figure, because obviously that's not part of the cost of getting the goods to the location and condition available for sale. It is, however, an abnormal loss. It's an unusual cost of those goods. Um, and so therefore we'll put it in the actual statement of income as an operating expense. We can then work out what the payout amount would be simply by subtracting the 1,200 from that amount to get 45750. And then in the trading statement, you can do your adding. Your total sales should come to 25079250. Your purchases you would have calculated as 1470305050, which you can then put up here as part of purchases. And then you can subtract your closing stock, which would be the amount of two five, six, six, six hundred. Although it is often done where it's a subtotal is worked out, um, it's not actually necessary. Um, it's up to you if you want to put it in or not. But your total cost of sales would need to be shown as 13192950. And then you're finished.